Hello. Anyways, this video will be covering hash as to be fair. The round is it's quite a new round to this game, especially for the British. I'll be joined by Code, which is mainly a Russian tank player, in discussing it. But the guy who actually helped me in this video was Lord Ronar. He was one of the people who actually came up with the theory, and which we actually proved correct in this video. Theory is hesh. No, people have been playing it by it's been played constantly in changing ways. The issue was no one ever knew how to play it exactly right. For example, people would hit harder parts of armor to try and cause sprawl damage, but that doesn't happen in this game. So there's another mechanic in it that me and him figured out that actually works well, which we're going to cover in this video. Now. As you can see, I'm using a Centurion Mark 10, and you would think that would be art matched against an IS-3, but this is actually where you're completely wrong. Using the hash rounds, well, actually, for example, the best, I misunderstood where he actually told me to shoot for these couple of shots, which we'll skip by. Let's see. I think it's next one, next shot here. It's fire again at the side corner, as you can see there. It hits there, it does very little sprawl damage. Yes, code. Hello. Hello. Speak away, man. Uh, this will affect you quite drastically, as you can see the thicker parts over 150 and won't penetrate. But effective doesn't actually determine anything with it. Did you know that code? Nah, uh, I have no idea what. No, cash is such. No, do you know your effective armor? It doesn't no. mean squat when it comes to hash. If your plate is under 150 millimeters thick, it will penetrate your plate. Oh. Like on the I, your I, on one of your tanks, you will pen. If I fire a hash, this is the mechanic. If it's over, as you can see there, again, I need to get rid of that. The next shot is actually the correct one. But hash-wise, if you have any types of ammunition. As you can see, right through the front. Hesh. No matter, it, it doesn't, it, effective doesn't affect it. On the Tiger 2, the Conqueror can't penetrate with Hesh on the front glacius. Due to the fact it's only 100, it's 150 mil thick, as you can see there. It's 120, and the Hesh penetrated that there tank easily enough. On the IS3, give the Hesh given it the Centurion an advantage over it. Yeah, I'm just picking on that there. We M5 over there <laughs> that we're testing it. Sorry, M2A2. But as you can see, that he's bringing ours IS3 again. We're looking at different wee areas where to shoot on the hash. So you're saying that was it 150 millimeters, or was it more than that? Is Any uh, impossible. Well, it's useless against hash. Anything below 150 millimeters thick. Hash will penetrate and and kill your tank essentially. All right, so pretty much the all the T54s and the IS3 are pretty much screwed. The T10M is penetrate penetrate straight from the front as well. Yeah, the effective the doesn't IS, affect it. The IS4 is 160. T10M is 120. Yep, effective doesn't mean squat in this tank. If if the effective now, in fact it could be 500 mil, the squash shell will still penetrate. That's how the mechanic works. Most yeah. people who are playing it, hope they get sprawl damage done. We tried on different tanks to prove the theory, like on the IS-2 and later on in the video there will be other tanks like the Tigers we tried on, just to prove the point. But as you can see, when you fire, we tried it on each cheek, the strongest point on the IS-2. 1944, which is what I fix armor on IS2 on the cheeks. Code, you've got the the IS2 mod 44. Yep. Uh, let me just get that up now. It just, as you can see, it the hash round once if used right and done right is formidable. So for the cheeks of the IS2, yep, uh, it's about 100 millimeters. That's base, right? 
Uh, yeah. That's What's just like effective? outside the turret. Yeah, well. What's the effective? Oh, effective thickness is about... is 110 millimeters from what I'm looking at. Yep. We hit on the side cheek on the Wii U curve bit, so it should be about... what? It should be about 150, 160 effective. Uh, well, I'm looking at the turret now. If you try and shoot the sides of the turret, it's about because it's curved, it's 350 millimeters. But if you shoot the actual flat bit, yeah, that's about. Let's have a look. Zoom out. Uh, yeah, that's about 120 millimeters each side. As you can see, the effective thickness doesn't actually matter. Really. We to prove this here we brought out the Conqueror. And my friend left to bring out the tank the tiger tank. So this is where we're proving the point point of the effectiveness. The Tiger 2 H's frontal is 145mm on the upper glaciers. Why only a hundred on the lower glaciers? The hash round as you will see the fires, it'll only do harder damage, like to the turret with its fragment, because it's five millimeter less penetration than the base armor, which proves our theory correct in that aspect. The hash round is, it'll be a game changer. There'll need to be adaptions made in place. As, as you can see, if it hits the lower glaciers, it'll go clean through, which proves that theory still. The Hesh, <clears throat> while it's a newish round, it was never used as effective, whereas no one knew how to use it. We only came across this theory by chatting to the guy, by me and him just bringing up in a random chat, and we decided to test this theory. It was correct. So, until now, there's been, this is the most effective way to use a Hesh round. If you know the tank off by heart, you'll know what plates are, well, what their mantle thickness is, I see there was no penetrating in the game. But you'll be able to find out all different details on it. This is a proven with 150mm penetration on the Centurion Mark 10. With this hash round, we bring it out to see if how it penetrates the upper glaciers. Do you have any questions so far, Code? Uh, none just yet. I said, I'm doing my best to explain it without overcomplicating it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine at the moment. Essentially, as you'll see, the hash round on the Centurion is a it is significantly more powerful. But as you as you, as I pointed out, as soon as I fire and hit the upper glaciers here, I actually hit bang the center. I think. Um. This is it, that's the, the hash round will, as it me actually looking where to fire. As you can see when it hits there, it'll go clean through the front of it, because it's still 150mm. And it'll sprawl completely inside the tank, which proves our theory. That depending on the unit it is, and depending on its base armor, will be whether hash is effective or not. The hash round now can do trap shots. If aimed right, say on the T32, as I'll show you later on in this video. But the difference was hash. It was its penetrating properties can be quite different. This is an unusual shell. Uh, just one question. Yep. What's a trap shot? The trap shot. For example, if I fire my shot, it bounces off the turret into the up top of the like top of the turret, or bounces into. The, into the tank. Oh right, yeah. That's happened to me a couple of times. But the issue with the hash one, anyways, I'll explain what happened there. The turret's 182 mil thick on the front before I get into the trap shots. As you can see, that also proves our theory that it doesn't penetrate anything more than it's what it says, but will penetrate the lower units. So, if you want to penetrate in that, a T10M, there's no chance that you'll penetrate the turret with hash. You'll need to aim for the hole and hope you don't 
miss <laughs> or it doesn't bounce. As you can see there, hitting even dropping the hash on top won't always work because it'll ricochet. And on the we turn the turret slightly, giving it about 180 mil effective at that angle on us. As you can see it didn't matter there the hash still penetrated at that angle. Even with the additional track blocks on. So that again proves that it doesn't matter how thick how well it's angled really or how thick it is. If it hits it'll penetrate if it's under 150 mil or 145. Issue is if it's at long distances, be prepared for waiting times as soon as you fire pull back because it can take a while to reload. Uh, to answer your trap shot questions and explain it in more detail, essentially, with it's not actually a trap, it's not what you would say a trap shot normally would be, is, but the head shell if it hits in the right place, the shell will explode and cause massive amounts of shrapnel. So that'll instead penetrate the top of the tank, the top hole of the tank. The shell would actually go into it, but the actual shrapnel will, and it'll cause far more damage to the internal tank. All right. So, everyone that was complaining about the hash round being useless, if you if you listen to more this this video, hopefully will explain how to use it to you, as it was quite we weren't at quite a bit of issues. <laughs> as you can see here in the T32, the tougher tanks, as you can see there, <coughs> the upper glaciers and lower glaciers goes clean through because it's only. What 110, 120 mil thick? Well, the upper glacius is up to 200 mil, I think. Possibly. Sorry, the turret is 298, isn't it? On the T32. The T32. Yep. Uh, I'll have a look. <coughs> T32 preview. So you want the effective thickness on the turret? Uh, no, just the base thickness. Um, 298. I was right then, 298. As you can see, when I fire the turret here, the shot will just ricochet off like that. And when I fire again on the turret to prove it, at different parts of the turret because of the thickness, no, it's not on penetration or sprawling because of how thick its turret armor is. Where if I switch to my Sabbath shells, it will go clean through because of how it's the same amount of penetration. But as you can see, there's very little sprawl damage if one maybe fragment, which makes this tank shell essentially useless against tanks with over 150 mil armor plates. Which means you'll need to approach the Mars differently and the Jag Tiger quite differently. Essentially, aiming at the lower mantle on the side of the turret, well, it was turning there, so it still hit the front. This is what I mean. This is the shot coming up now about the tri uh, trap shot I done. Well, the Hesh trap shot. <laughs> and I think it's part. Nope, it's not, it's after a here one, actually, I think. No, it's there, actually. You see, if, as you've seen there, it hit and exploded, and it fragmented down into the tank. And done quite... <laughs> quite a lot of damage. Though nothing major to cripple the turret, it just done quite a bit of internal crew member damage. But, as you can see, the Hesh can be effective if used correctly. Maybe in a long video, I may have repeated myself a few times, but if you have any questions, please put it, just leave it, leave a comment, message me in game, or comment on the video really, or message me on YouTube if you want any more help or any and, or any questions on the hash round. Hopefully, I've covered everything. Have you got anything you want to ask, Code? Oh no, it's pretty much fine from me. It's made it as good as you could. It makes, it's, it's quite a new mechanic, isn't it? Well, the American tanks actually have hash. Uh, they don't actually, it's the... They do. Wait, when did they get hash? I think they've had it for a while in the M47 and such. I only thought, I got, I thought they got heat fin stabilized. 
Yeah, they get them as well. That's Actually, awesome. wait. No, there was one that had her. Uh, it was the M60, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, the M60 is the one with Hash. Yeah. And the Leopard one. Also, I'll cover this here at the end. Uh, the Hash rounds that the British have, you'll find that they're quite considerably more lethal and more prominent than the Leopard 1's Hash and the M60's Hash round. This is due to the fact that the gun velocity and the fact is the Hash round was originally developed by Britain. So the Hesh would be, there's a reason why it's more effective, is a better tank shell, because it was designed for the Centurion and the Conqueror. Uh, and it didn't need to be adapted in many other ways for tanks such as the Leopard and the M60 to fire. The tanks in general, overall, overall is an effect, is an effective shell type. Oh, that's actually a good screenshot there, actually. <laughs> Of the Centurion, but the shell type itself is is outstandingly effective. It really is. As long as you keep to the guide that I made there, hit mantles that's below 150 mil or 150 down, you will kill that tank. As long as they don't damage you beyond belief, or if you, as long as you get the first shot in, I can guarantee now that you will kill that tank with a hash round. The amount of fragments make the British hash round the most lethal. That's the main issue. I've noticed that on the German hash rounds and the, on the M60 they don't fragment as much. Now they have the same penetrating power for some reason. I'll do a video explaining them at some point as well but as you can see the British hash rounds actually make the game quite a bit more balanced. That's what the issue was. No one actually knew how to use the British tanks well. Well the rounds, better way to put it. If you use, as long as you get the hash round aimed right and know how to use it and hope this video helped you, you should be able to go up against other tanks really simply. The way tanks you'll have to use sabots on are tanks such as the Mars because of how thick its base armor is. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the vid, uh, please like and subscribe. And once again if you have any more questions leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can or message me in game as you can see my game name there, Joshua D12. Or you can send me a message directly on YouTube, but it may, may, may take me longer to get that back to you on the personal message on YouTube, as it doesn't notify me on them, then we check it once or twice a week. Anyways, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and hope you enjoyed it.